The death go is! Okay. <laughs> Disappeared on us, but now it's back. Interesting. Welcome to the Hang Out Conversation special episode. You have to uh, click on the. We're changing from studio to voice to chat with the dead poets. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. November, you got November going on too? See? No shave, November. Oh, yeah, I am. I know I started, I'm just a little slower than him. Hey. It's Natalie's also doing it with us. <laughs> I am. It's hereditary. Natalie's doing it too? Yeah, yeah. Except she's doing it on her legs, probably, I'm going to guess. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't an insult. <laughs> Girls get hair on their legs. It's a, it's a fact. Hashtag fact. Uh, cool song. What was the name of that song for everyone listening? Uh, it's uh, Make Believe. It's Make -believe? Uh, an acoustic song we wrote you know, a couple of, about a year ago, actually. And now we are uh, starting to play live more. <laughs> Cool. So you played it live a bunch of times, or? Yeah, we 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 done like uh, live versions of it, and then uh, we recorded it. There's some like really big production on it on the studio version, and then live, which is we're probably gonna start doing it more acoustic rather than full on electric. I think it sounds a little better live-wise when it's played acoustically. 
I guess that's how we put it. It's a like really intimate song. It's you know, it's very simple parts. It was re originally it was just Nico and I was jamming, and I showed him uh, a song, completely done, like a full song, and then and we put all a little part on it, and now we have this. Cool. And so, how did you guys come up with the name? I mean, coming up with a band name, like I know coming up with a movie name, it's like impossible. How did you guys come up with Death Poets? And what is it, like? How long did it take you? What does it mean to yeah, you? Was, or? <laughs> I, was, uh, I was working at Urban Outfitters at the time. We were. We were. Yeah. He was. He was. He was his day off. And then I was folding Death Poet Society shirts. Nice. And then that's just kind of how it came about. We thought Dead Poets was a little too much. Yeah, we played around the name. And it was literally like two text messages. And then because we wanted to do, wanted to have like a side project where we just play music because we should be in another band together with like five people. Mm -hmm. And waiting for those people to come and show up to rehearse, we, we spent hours just waiting. So we started jamming together, writing more music ourselves. And we decided to do like a fun little event a friend was putting together at Churchill's Pubs here in Miami and then mm -hmm. we were like, let's just play that too and then we just needed a name and then that's how meaningful our name is. The Deaf Poet Society, just the Deaf Poets, cool. Yeah, really yeah. Like music, so. Do people ask, because like, do you, people think Deaf Poets, think Deaf, they think music, they're like, can you guys, we can't, you know, they make jokes about the sound and stuff like that, I'm guessing, or not. Uh, only know. one time. Just one time? I mean, only one time, because we, we have a... This is a little different from what we usually do. We usually play uh, really loud and more like, I guess, less. Yeah, yeah. so then we, I remember one time. Grunge? Yeah, yeah grunge. <laughs> one time yeah. on the show, some guy was like, I don't know why they call you Deaf Poets, because I guess it would be too loud. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're too loud. You're like, you're too yeah, old. I was like, oh, good one, bruh. Good so, one, bruh. So, and you guys are in Florida? Yes. I'm from Argentina. And I'm born here. Nice. And I'm so... Born. And oh. so, how did you guys um, like? What's the music scene for you guys down there, and and how is how is it how has it been playing clubs and and thing? Have you been doing that yeah. kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, ever since we were sixteen, we're playing this scene. Definitely, I, we played. I think almost any venue that allows live music, we probably play there at least once. And whenever one opens or we have an opportunity, we love to try new venues and really expand the scene. Uh, when we first started, the music scene was I, it was very funny because it started, I would say really growing how it is now, right around the time we wrote the band. And we saw it, we saw it like with local, local shows getting bigger and bigger and definitely more supporters coming in and now since Miami is developing so much, it's, I guess the scene is really, really becoming better every day. Well, so, so the Miami is very, it goes with a trend. Yeah. Uh, early 2000s it was the uh, pop punk, you know, that type of music and then, as, and then there was a metal scene going around and now I guess it's starting. Yeah, not not so much. I thought yeah. not when we first started when we were younger. But. That's true. Yeah, that a lot of like, cultures, a lot of cultural music. I'm guessing too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everything is mixing now. Like before, you would go to Churchill's and really see only one genre of band, like little exceptions. And now, for instance, that venue they host any any kind of music. Band. Yeah, every month is jazz night, for example. Yeah. And then I was there. I was there the other day for a metal show, a thrash show. <laughs> Mel's good. Uh, real quick, I didn't introduce Natalie Smala. She's here too. She's she's not gonna say much because she's a deaf poet. But uh, but she's she's we had her on the show two years ago with Lori Grody way back when, and now she's all grown up and stuff. And I'm Matt Rappaport. Mm -hmm. And we have a couple of questions uh, from the audience. Cliff Roth is watching. He asked. He's the funny dude. He's an artist. He said, if you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be? <laughs> That's like a deaf poet question. <laughs> What veggie would you well, be? Nigga would definitely be like a carrot or something like that. No, I'd be a potato, bro. Probably, I'd like potato. To, I think I'd be a potato. Because <laughs> it's... Cause Cause it's I, I, I love french fries. And okay. I don't know. I just... They grow on the ground and I just kind of chill all the time. You're like spud. You're like spud. I feel like, I feel like I'd be something really un like weird, like a asparagus or an artichoke or something. Yeah, because you always smell funny. I always smell funny. <laughs> you smell funny. Asparagus. That's what you want from a bandmate to tell you you smell funny. Apparently, I look like smelling garlic. But eat a lot of if you don't smell funny and you're not sweating, then you're doing it wrong, right? No, no. So, like, I'm guessing at the end of the show. Thanks for that question, Cliff. At the end of every show, you guys are like, if you're not drenching, drenching in sweat and tears and blood and. Actually, yeah. I remember one show where I was like, a third song in, I'm like, I'm not sweaty enough. And I was <laughs> not on the mic, and then I regret it because then I was way too sweaty by the end of it. <laughs> what show was that? That was a. Uh, uh, Ricochets on oh, Ladies Night. Yeah, that was a fun show. Yeah, I don't know. I ended up having like a bunch of sweat and beer. Like people started throwing beer. Oh man. So, do yeah, you guys? Do you, are you guys pretty much drinking beers during the show while you're playing, or? 
Anyway, it wasn't well, it depends. I'm mostly at the venue gives us free beer. Then, yeah, yeah take but advantage of, why not? Take advantage of it. Take what you can get. And what about influences? I mean, what did you guys listen to growing up? I mean, I don't know how old you guys are, but... I mean, we're, 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 we're both 23. We're both 23. And, I mean... Let's see, 23. Think, I'm trying to do the my, math. You know, middle school for me, and then what started me in music was like, you know, let's up in ACDC. Yeah, that's what started me. Yeah. And then from there on, like, I started evolving to things I listen to now. It's like, no, no, you listen to like Linkin Park. Nine, I used no. to. I used to. You gotta go. I never back. listened to Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, never, so wait, when you guys were teenagers, though, like, it never, was like, I don't even know any other songs. When you guys were teenagers, with like the Killers and the Shins and Jack White, right? We actually right? had a Killers face together. Yeah, we did have a Killers face. I think we went to three, almost three shows. Yeah. Actually, we went to yeah three shows actually. So, and on oh, no, the shins are amazing. I love the shins. I love the uh, new project Broken Bells with uh, Danger Mouse. Really cool. Nice. Cool. And so Zeppelin's big too. You're big on the big on the Zeppelin. Yeah. Yeah. I have a. I remember. A, you keep, this oh, girl yeah, got this me. Got me. <laughs> she's like, jealous. oh, I got you something. I was like, what is it? And she got me a Jimmy Page autograph with my name on it. It's like Nicholas Which is not fair. Jimmy it's, Page. It's not fair. Like, that was it like, isn't fair. Like, he should get, like, I don't know. That's not fair. He's at Sean Watts at Sean and Nico. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, let's... Like, personalize. Uh, so I'm going to get, like, a John Bonham one, and then... Yeah, from the finger. dead, yeah. Yeah, like, somehow, <laughs> somehow, somehow, from... I guess from his, his Jason Bonham, his son or something. Did you guys... Have you guys ever covered Zeppelin concert, or, you're, or, or are you just or in a show, or is it too nerve-wracking to cover such a classic band? That's, it's a no, I mean, we used to actually, when we were younger, we covered that band, actually. Communication. Yeah, right? we did that song, but when we were more people. Daisy Confused. Did we think Daisy Confused? When we were, yeah, well, in the band before, the one before this one, I guess, five years, six years ago. Yeah. And then we did we did those covers, actually, but we are more people, so it makes sense. Yeah. So how many bands, like, everyone goes through a bunch of different bands. How many bands would you say you've each gone through over the last, what, since you were 16? Mm-hmm. Nah, dude, no. I mean, projects, yeah, but, like, projects, when yeah. we said that it was official... Probably like two. Two. Or the one that we were doing. No, I did see the band. Yeah, but, oh, yeah, but we were in, in, in a time period when I was in a different band. Yeah. He was in a different band too, and then he joined my band. So. Yeah. So like schedule, I've, I like scheduling is probably the hardest thing. Trying to get everyone to meet in the same place and actually get to rehearsal, and then when you're at rehearsal, tra- actually rehearsing instead of goofing off and mm-hmm. messing around. And. Well, we, we're uh, we're pretty strict now. Like. We, uh, when it comes to rehearsal, the good thing is, luckily, we're just two people, so... When that's why we're two people, almost, yeah. because we, didn't, we don't want to depend on other people. It's and do you play hard. other, you guys play other instruments, guitar and drums, basically, or do you guys have... I guess it's it's going, I mean, Nico definitely, he's, he's starting to play more keyboards. Uh, before, we, when we started the band originally, he just was a drummer, and now he does a lot of the backups. Um, I'm also, he knows how to play bass and guitar and things like that, so, especially, you know, as two people, we want to try our best to be multi-instrumentalists and then when we have other songs we can do different kinds of versions of it live and so on. Um, but I'm thinking we're going to probably involve Princess Nico now in a lot more other things. Okay, cool. Natalie has to take off. Natalie, it's good to see you. You can check out uh, our, my show that I did with Natalie two years ago where she sang, she covered, well, she, they sang a couple songs uh, and uh, she actually is working with you guys. That's how I found you. That's the connection of the social media. <laughs> I found, I know Joe Martinez, who knew Natalie, and Natalie knows you two. And now Natalie's gonna go actually work and uh, and she Natalie and Natalie has a great question. She wants to know if you each could be a Disney princess. What would well which Disney princess and I'll put in slash Disney characters so you don't <laughs> have to get You know what? I'm gonna say Princess Leia. Oh but she's technically a princess now. Yeah. She's technically <laughs> Disney too. Technically she technically Disney. Technically, Leia is a Disney character because they own Star Wars, but in a sense. Nice. Jasmine, Jasmine, Aladdin, Aladdin, for sure. Always, Aladdin? Always. Aladdin, Jasmine, oh my goodness. Always a Aladdin. All right, cool, Natalie. Uh, so you guys, I'm ready. I'm ready for another song. They're ready for another song. You guys ready to, to jam out a little bit? You going to do a... Yeah, uh... song. Definitely. Cool. So what's the name of this song? What song? Play? Well, do you want to do it a boy? Or... Yeah, let's do that one. Okay. Yeah, this one's called When I Was a Boy. It's, it's a song that we wrote a while back. and uh, When you were boys? I'm sorry? I said when you were boys? Yeah, when we were, yeah, a week ago. Sweet. And, uh, yeah, no, we just wrote that, and it was a while back, so it's another kind of acoustic song. We try to find the songs that kind of fit with what the setup we have. So uh, That works, yeah. All right, go into studio mode. We're going to rock out for you Google Plusers. All right. Rock. <clears throat> 
Like, do you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was a boy from Illinois, dumb college kid. Nothing to give and nothing to live. Brother, where should I go? Where the sun always shines. Where the sugar is spiced to people are nice. So tell me the truth. I want to know. Am I alone? I waited too long. I want to know where I belong, waited too long. I want to know. I was a boy, stood in the rain. I was turned into days with nothing to stay. Am I so blue? I lie, I won't cry for you. I won't know. Am I alone? Waiting too long. I want to know where I belong. Waiting too long. Am I? Sound effects. Sound effects. Awesome. awesome. So I so got, I got so it. So turn, turn that down. down. How'd it sound? It sounded great. Awesome. Sounded good. How'd it feel? Good. Yeah. Good. I feel good. Feel good. How'd it feel? Feel good. Different. You guys are not the usual that we always do. Yeah, definitely. But it's nice. We're all. Uh, nice. Yeah, it's definitely a, a change from what we're used to in the environment. So you guys are used to really playing really loud, really hard. Is that not sense? necessarily that? We're just it's. I feel like our music is a little bit more um, has more of a kick to it. You know, like when we when we play live, for instance, I rely a lot of times on a pedal board that I, I put together with all the gear I use, the guitar, the amp, and um, all that. It's a combination to really get the sound that fills us in. And uh, when you when a lot of times when you hear us live, we don't. I feel like we don't sound just like two people. When we write the music, Nico specifically. Will write his drum parts to fill in all the empty spaces that normally would a bass player or a keyboardist or the other players normally would do, and then vice versa for me, the pedals and so on. So 
cool. Mm-hmm. And did, did you guys did you guys sell all your self taught? Did you study somewhere? Mm-hmm. No. I was a uh, I was a band geek in uh, throughout middle school and high school. So. Band geeks, <laughs> band camp. So I did everything from jazz band to marching band to winter drumline to orchestra. So. And the whole time you were like, when can I get out of all this to be a rock star, right? <laughs> yeah, well, like, what can I get out of this classical music? Is kind of yeah. I mean that's kinda. that's where I kind of got myself. Also, um, there was actually a, a drum instructor. Well, it was a, a civics teacher in a high school, who who was a Marine drum corps or uh, snare player, and then he 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 was just like, hey, I help you out. So we had like a whole drum line here. We spent hours on end just working on technique and rudiments and stuff like that. So that's where I got most of my stuff. But drum set, I think I. Almost, I'm almost self taught at uh, playing drums. Like it's different because I only had like drum lessons when I was younger, probably you know once a week. And I, li- I always lived in the apartment, so I really couldn't play drums. Yeah. So it was mostly just whenever I, we can get to go to the studio. Whenever we had, uh, I guess, because Nico and I, I guess, our first band together was uh, in ninth grade, and that was really the only opportunity when he would come to my house, or we would figure out a, a spot to really play together with you know, a full drum set with an yeah. amp. Did you guys start out with like songs, like common bands, common songs you knew that you like? What was the first, like before you wrote songs, right? Did you guys start with, uh, I don't know, like a Nirvana or a Pearl Jam song or something like that, or? Well, actually, we the we didn't really rely so much on songwriting our because since we have more people, we usually had like a lot of other people songwriting too. Yeah, actually, in a lot of the bands that we were in previously, um, Nico and I really weren't songwriters. It wasn't until I guess. Uh, junior year of our high school, I guess a couple more bands into it where we started really developing our own sound and really putting the initiative to write our own music. But yeah, mostly a lot of the things are how we first started writing music, which is, I think our approach was to just play something that's fun for the audience. So we, we relied a lot on like the energy of like Nirvana and bands like that. Yeah, right. There were huge influences for sure. Because uh, I don't know, it just uh, there's a lot of times where, I mean you're younger so not a lot of people Miami is weird when it comes to stuff like that. Like it's just you get a, you get different crowds, and other crowds just stare at you, which is sometimes like a little uncomfortable. But yeah, because <laughs> I mean, they're, well, they're enjoying the music, but they just you know stone cold. Like, you know, let's do something to make them want to do something. Exactly. Miami is like almost the exact diagonal of Seattle. I mean, probably yeah. pretty close, right? Yeah. So the exact polar opposite. Yeah. I mean, not every show is like that. You you'll see because we'll have some random shows where we it just. Out, out of surprise, it ended up turning yeah, into a complete yeah. mosh pit. Like we didn't expect it. Like we're we're on stage and we're just oh we, you know it's it's a good show, it's packed, and we're just looking at each other playing, and all of a sudden we look back and then there's like 20 people mosh pitting, which you know does come That's out. That's pretty cool. Do they have they try to? Have you guys ever jumped into the crowd like that or no? I want to. I always want. You know what? We we did a couple of shows that. To I mean I can't really just like jump out because then it'd be Sean just playing guitar, but. <laughs> It was a uh, record store day, Sweat Records, a record uh, store that um, here in Miami, who actually did a seven-inch release. Um, they had a, a, it's like a block party, so we were one of the main bands on the main stage, and then it was com- by complete accident. Sean was playing a uh, last song, and his guitar got unplugged. So then I was like, okay, I got on the mic, and I said, everyone jumped this, like just rushed the stage, and then we, it was like a trailer stage. It wasn't like. Yeah. Any crazy, and then everyone rushed it, so it was like we're like everyone people, on stage. 30, 40 people randomly. On yeah. Top, so then we just plugged in again, and then we started playing the song, and then. So you know, did you play? You were playing with all the people on stage. Yeah, yeah. And, and there was actually like a little. There were two little kids there somehow, and then one kid was just going crazy. Crazy, yeah. There's actually a video of it yeah, on Facebook. Video. It's yeah. actually pretty fun, and. Um, cool. I always want to implement the crowd in our performances as much as we can. Uh, Sometimes people are not expecting it. I will point at Song Lei, what's your name? And she'll tell me, but this song's for you. And I got it. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, some weird reactions and sometimes cool reactions. And then we actually try to get like, some sort of like brotherly, friendly fights on stage so then people can you know, feel more comfortable when they watch us. Yeah. So it's not so much like there's a wall between us and the audience. You know? We try mm-hmm. to emerge everyone. We try this. to make it the whole entertaining, like the whole act. Yeah, we're trying to make yeah. like, yeah. yeah. people show like, a good time. Definitely. Comedy is a big part of it. I mean, entertaining, I mean, comedic, I think it's a big part of it. And stories. <laughs> who are some of your favorite people to see, like, live? Who do you think is really good live that you love seeing, like, as far as not just the music, but, like, they, they engage the crowd, they talk to the crowd? Are there any uh, anything so that comes to mind? The, probably one of the best live shows to this day that I will remember. Like, I've seen a lot of amazing shows, but probably one of the best ones. Every single was of Nico. 
was like four or five years ago, we saw My Morning Jacket at the Fillmore. And it was funny because I, I was there with um, and, uh, two other friends of ours, and we were literally, I felt like we were the only younger, I guess, younger crowd. Everyone was in their later 30s and 40s, and it was an older crowd, I wasn't expecting it. And the performance was just unbelievable. They were really engaged. We, we were in the front row, so the, it was Jim James was right literally in our face, like, <laughs> smoking. It's, it's unbelievable. It was a really cool experience. And another concert that I thought more in, in the engage the crowd when we saw Phoenix. The Phoenix. Phoenix. The film, uh, yeah. the film more. And what was the name, what's the name of the singer? It, it, like, was the name? I don't remember. Name? Well, the singer, I, I can't remember his name. He would, like, at one point, he just sat by the rails and then he started singing with everyone. He, like, crowd surfed to almost the, the entire, the entire, yeah. like, the, wow. entire the entire film more so that he could be all the way in the and, back. And the XLR that he had that poured to his microphone was glowing, like, in the dark. It was, like, a really crazy, uh, like, big red, I mean, sorry, blue that was, like, coming out of the whole room. And he went all the way out, crowd surfed all the way out, and was singing still, like, while he's, while he's crowd surfing. I mean, I wish yeah. I could do that. I never crowd surfed in my life. I really you guys have some practicing to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, crowd surfing, 101. It would be pretty cool. Uh, there are a couple of people watching. There's some questions. Ag Agia Negra, I don't know if I said that na name right. I messed it up or not. Uh, they wanted, she wants to know, or he wants to know about a lot of bands you like. They're asking about Disturbed, Black Sabbath, Beatles. I mean, so I'm guessing those are all, are those all ba bands you kind of listen to or like? Yeah. For sure, Black like Sabbath and it's, it's, Beatles. It's weird because like we we both go through the same kind of things where we uh we'll get really obsessed with a certain band and all of a sudden we'll revisit another band. Like uh I, I was having an obsession with Tame Impala lately, and then when that started passing, I really really got into uh, the Beatles and Black Sabbath, which I never really listened to when I was younger. When I was younger, it was always Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stone. Those Rolling Stones, I was taught that way from my parents and. Now I'm really into like psychedelic music, like there's so Floyd. much of it. Yeah, Pink really Floyd. haven't experienced yet. Are unbelievable. The Beatles and Black Sabbath, or the Black Sabbath's first album. I, I've been listening to it for the last like two months. It's it's ridiculous. Do you guys like the idea of a context for that question? A concept album is that something that like telling a story from like track A, track A to track Z? Is Definitely. that kind of something yeah, you we guys want to do? We thought about not necessarily have like a like concept like let's talk about this one particular story, but when we write lyrics, we try to keep it somewhat relevant, and we're not just talking about just nonsense, you know. Yeah. It's, we try to either do personal experiences or or just tell a story, but we never actually thought about concept like from beginning to end. I don't think the, the only concept we had was uh, the album that we're releasing in the next, I would say, two and a half weeks or whatever it is. Um, it's uh, the concept was to, to try to give a mix of, of like softer songs like what you're hearing today, and then of course our more upbeat songs, which is you know louder with distortion and fuzzed up. But we, we really had the approach, the concept of the album was to to show people that we can write soft music, we can write catch like you know I would say more more music acceptable for TV and things like that. And then of course like underground rock, which we you know we grew up on, which we love and. That's definitely our biggest influence behind it. How Led Zeppelin started before being like the bigger. Awesome. This is interesting. This is the first time uh, I've seen random people join the hangout. It's and they, they, I don't know where they where they're coming from, but hey, Luis, just gonna get rid of you. Uh, it's cool. I want to hear you guys play again. I'm ready to hear another song. I think everybody watching is like loving the music, loving the sound. So what's in it? What's what do you got next for us? Surprise us. All right, this one it's, uh, it's a song. It was our first slow song we ever wrote by accident and ended up being one of our favorites. It's a very intimate song. It's called uh, Cold Cold Thieves. And uh, we'll play it for you. The studio version has like a really powerful drumming part. I'm going to try to see if I can do that. Okay. With if it's loud, it's loud. People people love the loud. They'll, they'll, right. deal with it. they'll turn their volume down. For sure. Uh, we're going to do this one and then the next two we're going to do it a little faster. Cool. Well, actually, actually, you know, know do you guys want to do two, two in a row? row? Yeah, let's do two in a row. Let's do let's two, two in a row. row. Sweet. <clears throat> the Death Poets Society. Society. Do you want to start with Flyman and then we we'll do Poetics? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mama, oh, quit. Cussing and shouting Can you see I'm lost and very broken hearted 
I know I'm young, yet feel so old. Let me let you be on your own. Slowly but surely, wheels keep on turning. Mama, don't you cry, I'm just a simple little lie. I hear you calling me to come on home. I hear you calling me to come on home. You're cold and alone. Morning for the same old sun. How I miss you, how I need you. Yeah, it's the first time playing acoustic. This is the song we usually rely on with uh, like very heavy, fuzzed out distortion. And then, of course, Nico is extremely aggressive in the song with like the cymbals and so on. Oh, we'll try. Sounds kind of the water break. break. Yeah, let's, let's try. It. Bye. 
wanna fly album that's going to be coming out soon. So this Hangouts on Air have gone, Hangouts have gone through so many things over the last two years and this is like the newest version, the coolest version, uh, full screen and everything and, and uh, so now... We're going to do it definitely like a lot more actually. We really, really like the uh, idea. The setup is awesome. The setup is cool, yeah, and you guys can play and talk. You can do your own hangout on air concerts. So many, many people have done it. We've actually, I've had a couple of hangouts in real life where people gathered groups together, and we just did uh, like a Google Plus concert, and everyone just played a venue in New York, and we did, wow. we broadcast it. Uh, it's, yeah, it's on YouTube. It was, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of fun. And uh, uh, I'm thinking of an idea that maybe um, this is like this is awesome. Maybe this is something we could do like every two weeks, where we can uh, you know tell on Facebook and our social media and whoever you everybody. And um, and we can try to do something like this maybe once every two weeks, show some new songs, and it's definitely um, a different approach to the, our music since usually when people see us live, they don't get to see the softer songs or the acoustic songs that we feature in, in I guess, videos and so on, but we don't really do it live that often. And they don't get to talk to you and necessarily know you as well, yeah. maybe. Those are kind of cool to do this on tour as well. Yeah, that's definitely something. Oh, yeah, this is something I think everyone should be doing on tour. I think this is something like people keep people updated and, and give them a side of the band and, yeah. and a personality that they don't get just from listening to the CD, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, definitely, so. yeah, definitely should talk. Yeah, because we're going to, December 5th is probably our show. Uh, our, actually, November 22nd is our kickoff tour at Churchill's Pub. And we're going to be on the road hitting up December 5th all the way up to the northeast, so... Yeah, the 5th to the 21st, we're going to be going. Hopefully that'll be... So then, so yeah, we, we should take this on the road. It'll be fun. It's like that. a holiday It's like a holiday tour, kind of? Yeah. yeah, we're not really excited about the weather. I mean, it, it's going to be cool that it's a different change, but it's going to be really cold. <laughs> oh, yeah, so uh, someone put up a post today, like, uh, for people in Florida, anything below 80 is cold, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was like the joke. like Florida and SoCal. It's like yeah. in the 50s maybe here. It was like 60 yesterday, and that was warm for me. I was like... Like if it's like fifty five to sixty, that's like a heat wave now. So well, that's that. I love that. That's the thing. Like we're talking about like like thirty. <laughs> like well, you know, thirty is cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirty and twenty. And, I mean, and thirty and twenty is fine. I but, mean, what's the weather like over there during this time? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, like in the next month, it's gonna be like between thirties and forties. Hopefully not twenties. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So does that like with your fit like playing in the heat? You prefer heat or cold? Like playing in the heat. It's a sure. issue about playing in the cold. Um, it sucks because I used to, yes, exactly. I used to play class. That's how I started. I, I played uh, classical guitar for a couple of years, and I was you know, classically trained doing that kind of thing. And when you I would many times perform in, I guess, these certain environments where it's extremely cold, we did a few trips, or we're playing in an auditorium where it's insanely cold, and your hands they freeze up, your joints like it's 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 weird. It's a weird experience. And especially um, even singing, like sometimes it's different singing because when your lungs get really cold and you try to project, it, it, you can cough, you can do things like that. So well, I'm actually more, I, I'm scared of actually <laughs> getting <laughs> cold during, actually getting sick, yeah. yeah and then when I was stuck halfway through the tour, because yeah. yeah. we're not used to it. I mean, like the winter in Miami is probably cold for a week and then that's about it. Yeah. yeah. What's the coldest, like 55, 60 maybe? 
One, one time we got into like 40s. 40s. No, I didn't even lower. One, there was one time, like apparently, I don't know, 18 million years ago, <laughs> um, it snowed here. Like, I, wow. I, it's, uh, it hurricanes by you. That's bad. Yeah. So. That is crazy. And does Nico sing too, or? Well, that's what I'm trying to do. He, he never. I yeah. usually do backups mostly. It's mostly backup stuff. Um, not on. I mean, I don't sing well enough to. Yeah, you don't think you could do sort of like a Ringo? You could do at least one song where you're singing. No, the what you sing. <laughs> you, you you do you rap? Maybe you could do some kind of new different oh. kind of style. Uh, he did. He did at one random concert that just out of nowhere. We're just like playing, and all of a sudden he just he looks at me and he's like, "I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it." And I'm like, "God, no, you're not." He does <laughs> Don't it. do it. He takes his phone and he puts it next to uh, the microphone. And he plays it's the R. Kelly. No, was yeah, it? I played a uh, Ignition remix, and Ignition I got remix. everyone on the venue everybody. started singing. Everybody at Churchill's, everyone was singing. Hot my fresh out the kitchen. It was so good. <laughs> so I was like, it's the last song, and I just put that on my phone. Say, I started just, singing dude, with just it. Just go for it. That's what's cool when that kind of stuff happens. You don't even know what's you gonna happen. Yeah, they never usually. You know, we don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. It, it, well, it was like a, a random idea. Like we sometimes at random shows. Like even actually even in a big show, we try to think of something fun or something different to cover. Like uh, I, I guess the last amazing show, and personally for me, the last favorite show that we did was uh, the End of Days concert at Grand Central because the sound system, the lights. Were Grand Central, yeah, one of the smallest, biggest, I guess yeah. like, that makes sense, local uh, yeah. venue. Most Miami, they bring amazing acts. Like I was there the other day watching Black Rebel Motorcycle Club, and the Breeders came. Cool. Was, the Breeders just showed up. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, they they played. They had a show. It was uh, their their it was a kickoff show. Yeah. yeah, it was their kickoff show for going back on tour, like crazy. So that's the thing. Like you can see in Miami is an example. Like uh, all the promoters, especially all the new venues that are opening up, are really trying to get talent from all over the world to really come down here. So the scene is growing. There is a rock scene. It's small, but it's getting bigger every day. And and I guess touring bands are recognizing that because. Now I guess all the bands are now starting to go through it. Like we, I just found out a few days ago that uh, Arctic Monkeys are playing the 30th of January, and uh, that's a personal favorite of Nico and myself. So that's sweet. That's yeah, sweet. and so like everyone's doing social media, like whether you're music and band or you're an artist or anything. I mean, everyone's doing it. So I mean, do you think like like you gotta set yourself apart with social media, like to really stand out, or I mean, like what do you think? What do you guys think about social media and music and like, do you follow ba band social media pages? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the way that we see it, you know, back in the day, people had to always figure out how new medium of getting the music out there. Like, oh, you know, before it was records, and then people had to figure out how to make records cool, and, and then it was uh, eight tracks, and figure out how to, you can make music to satisfy the eight tracks, then cassettes, then CDs, and then now everything's digital, and then now we gotta figure out how to use our social media and the yeah. internet to our advantage in order to get more it, people to know about us and everything that we do, you know, so... It, it would be foolish not to take advantage of, like, all the free tools that, like, for instance, Google Hangout, like, yeah. you know, they didn't have that three years ago, you know, we couldn't do this, so now we have so many opportunities to really get our music out there, because we don't, you never know for a band uh, where their, their main scene is, like, we, it's possible we'll go on tour and then we play some random town in North Carolina and they love us, and that ends up being our best spot on tour. So it's it, the good thing about it is that we can reach out to people all over the world that wouldn't know about us if it wasn't. Right. For sure, yeah, you can get different groups of people that love you guys, and you're like, oh, why should we we'll know where to play based on who loves you? Yeah. You're like, we're really big in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Ohio. Yeah. So and I always ask people about almost famous like movies, like rock movies, like Spinal Tap. Do you guys have some like favorite rock and roll movies that you guys love? Or almost oh. famous, almost famous movie too. Yeah. Um, I think no, I think Spinal Tap is my favorite. I'm uh, I, I'm huge in comedy. Yeah. I, I mean, I love comedy. I, everything I do, if I if I can make someone laugh, I, it be, besides entertainment or music, like I feel good. So I have an obsession. With music. Bob, I have an obsession with Bob Dylan. So when the the documentary and then the No Direction, well, yeah, No Direction Home, and then no. the, yeah, 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 No Direction Home, I and think, then the other one came out. It was amazing. Yeah, the one where everyone. What about the one where everyone played Dylan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that one. That, one, that was interesting. Back. That was. Uh, I'm not there. I'm not there. I'm yeah. not there. Yeah. yeah. It was awesome, and then I saw in the movies a couple of years ago, like very like randomly, I saw it might get loud with uh, Jack White, Jimmy Page, yeah, Edge, and I was it was amazing. Like it was a really really cool documentary explaining the history and of course seeing like Jimmy Page, like 
he was talking about his gear and what he did and you know all the like famous famous riffs the, all the guitar things that he did that made him iconic today you know do so, you guys think I mean like based on because the music changes a lot a lot of kids you know the I mean there's some still great music out there but you know you think about like the big music and people like you know like Gaga and Miley Cyrus things like in Robin Thicke whatever and everyone you know like do you guys think we're gonna see not that you guys aren't great, but I'm saying in, in, in the next ten years, do you think we're gonna see like the band, like the grunge bands, be as big as they used to be, like that, the the like the Seattle grunge and things like that, or do you think that it's kind it's of like hard because like I was I was speaking with him, you know, like music changes every day. Like uh, next month it might be this, next month it might be my Cyrus. So it's like you kind of have to, I guess, find the right time. It's, it's also a lot of luck. It's Having the music that that's in, you know different and distinguishes yourself coming out at the right timing, you know when people want it. And um, I mean, I, I really do believe that there's a revival. Like there's gonna be a rock and roll revival. I'm seeing it like all over because there's there's so many like the older crowd loves loves music. Like for instance, the Black Keys an example. That's the revival. Tame Impala, like the whole psychedelic movement. You know these are bands that are huge and really really are. In the commercial scene, TV wise, um, Grammys, RK Fire, like they're yeah. it was very impressed how humongous RK Fire became with uh, the album before uh, last. And um, actually, yeah, they were here like uh, two weeks ago. Yeah, we saw them as a two weeks ago. Yeah, they just released their whole album on YouTube, I think, right? Yeah, yeah I know. The, the day we saw cool. them, the pre-release, like they played out of a nightclub here in Miami uh, they, as a reflector. So they, they, wow. they did um, a uh, Haitian benefit like relief show, and it, it was amazing. He, he got to go to the show on a Wednesday, and I went on a Thursday. Wow. And both shows were extremely small, small, intimate venues. Like you're seeing RK Fire in like a 300-person venue. That's pretty Even though there was crazy. Like 600 people, it was so insanely packed. And it was amazing. I, I've never seen a line as long as I did back then. I went to see them on Thursday, and there was a line, I, it must have been at least six blocks long. Like, I was unbelievable. <laughs> Completely wrapped around the entire venue. And um, I would say from an, like almost an hour before they performed, it was packing up more and more and more, and it was an amazing experience. Everyone was really music lovers. You could see everyone that was there wasn't just like, oh, I'm here for art, like just to be here. No, everyone there was, was there for music, which was awesome. It was a really nice experience. So we, we could, I totally, like, I know you guys said that was the last one, but you guys got like an encore, just finish up with one more song, or yeah, we got to pull one out? Yeah. Pull out one more? Yeah, let's pull out yeah. one more, Rocket, and we'll say goodbye, and uh, okay. I'll thank you guys, and, and uh, thank you. Yeah, no, it's been fun. We'll do, we do more of these in the future, and, uh, you know. Maybe we can do uh, halfway through a tour. We do like a uh, catching up. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah that'd, that'd be cool. cool. We, we we'll do something like you know probably we'll probably be freezing. You'll see us like completely covered up. That'd be that'd funny. Be the whole time, like my hand. Mm. <laughs> How do you live here? Once again, Death Punk Poet. So is it not part, part of your name? name? Sorry? Or is it, or is it, is it just, just death, death pose? pose? Or is it, or is it the, the death pose? Death. Just death. Uh, death. All right. Death I mean, what it would share, really. But we all usually just do death pose. It's, it's, it's like, Google, Google either one and it works. Cool. cool. All right. So, oh, wait. Can, oh, wait, can, you, can, you, can do you do the flips, flips with the jump sticks and stuff? No, no. Uh, I'm not, no. I remember one time I was at a, I was a show, watching a show, and the guy asked me to play drums. I'm like, yeah. He goes, yeah, I'm a visual drummer. Like, a, you know, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I just play. <laughs> I play with my mind. Yeah. Whoa! I was like, that's cool, man. No, no, Nico, Nico will pull it out once in a while, like a random, a little random. You did it at the Ricochet show, but I was just like, like laughing after. And, and it was, I, did it, I was like laughing. But one time he did it at a show where it was accidental. Like he was just playing. All of a sudden, this, that he threw the stick axe in the air and he caught it. Remember? Oh yeah. And he caught it, that. and the only person who saw it was our our very close mutual friend. He was like, he was like, oh, this is funny. <laughs> I can only imagine, imagine being in a show. Excuse me. Do that. Being in a show, you, you, lose, you your lose your drumstick. Drum stick? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, it happened like a couple of times. I have one time I hit my nose when I was playing. Um, I never show my sticks unless I'm unless they're expensive, so I don't. I never want. I don't want to throw sticks away. <laughs> they get pretty pricey, so I never like throw my sticks. Yeah, unless I break them. You never, you never think. And then when you start playing music every day, you notice that like. 
buying guitar strings and picks and sticks, it gets really expensive because you have to change it a lot, much more than you think. It's funny. Alright, let's do this one song. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Rock on. Tap toes. That one actually is actually that that one you said that inspired you, Kill Bill inspired you. Right? Yeah, right. definitely. Uh, I can hear a little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I guess a little bit. Of the message is lost in the translation when you have because when we play it live, I have like a very reverb filled like. It's just like a really old school type yeah. song, and then With it's just cool, I guess watching Kill Bill and then Quentin Tarantino uses a lot of that, yeah. like a lot of. Uh, Weird sixty sounds like surfer, stuff like that. Kind of. So we just that kind of came about. Yeah, sixty surfer like uh, Dick Dale kind of thing, which is awesome. That is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like when I'm taught, not that you look exactly like Ed Norton, but I have like a, it's like an Ed Norton Jr. kind of vibe from you. Wait, 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 wait. No, yeah. you. Oh me? <laughs> yeah. That, no, that's, no. A that's, that's a total. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking they just did like the Wes Anderson SNL. That was like the they they ripped off the uh, the uh, Ed Norton was Owen Wilson. 
And he did okay. like an Owen Wilson impression, so it's pretty funny. <laughs> so, I didn't have to see it. I, I yeah, um, I saw it on, on YouTube, yeah. I mean, no one really... I feel like we don't watch TV like we used to. We just, like, catch a video. I mean, it, it's just Nico and I, Um, you know, you, the, we have the very... uh. What's it called? Cliche musician artist life. We both work at our day jobs like every day, and then whenever we're free, we which is usually before or after our shift, we'll meet up and do something band related, like social media or writing new song lyrics, even recording anything that has to do with the band. Actually, so. do you guys? So how? So what is your before we go? So what is your favorite favorite song to cover, or what do you guys think you cover well? Like, do you have a go to cover? Like, because that's what. I feel like social media, people like like new music, but they want to, and I've said this before, they want to hear songs they like, and when you, if you play a song they like and they enjoy it, then they go check out your other music, is what I think. Mm -hmm. that, um, that is like the strategy. Um, What's your favorite cover? I mean, well, covers that we're done, that kind of fits what we do. Yeah. We, we've done uh, Egos of Death Metal and Ramon covers. Okay. Ramon's was my favorite. We did um, the KKK Took My Baby Away at Grand nice. Central. We just surprised. We didn't move about telling anybody, and uh, that was the first experience we ever had. Where I know, actually, second experience ever that we had where people were singing like along with this. It was during this one part where we're like, "Hey, oh!" and then everyone was, everyone, the entire venue was doing it. It was amazing. You know? That was a, a magical experience. <laughs> yeah, like, I can I can imagine, right? Like, well, yeah, just once put the a microphone once out there. In a bunch of shows, we get people that actually know our lyrics, and it's, it's like, oh, cool. Yeah, we're not used to it. like yeah. they're they're singing along or something. That was like it's an amazing experience when someone like knows your music and actually singing along. It's it's. Uh, can you imagine you pull someone on stage and they sing they can sing a verse? That would be pretty freaking. Yeah, we, we'll do that one day. We, we'll, well do that hopefully one day. We'll do, <laughs> we'll do that. Too, like, uh, uh, we have we have a few fans that are that are really really extremely supportive. They they go to all our shows. They uh. They'll, you know, some of them live very far, and they'll come and help us with the equipment or anything we need help with, and um, and you know, that's someone we can definitely ask. They they definitely know what some of the pass pass a, a sheet of music with the lyrics yeah. to everyone. That's cool. Well, thanks so much for being here. This has been a lot of fun. People enjoyed it, and there's a lot of there's a lot of you watching from all over the world, and so I didn't get to everyone's question because some of them are not in English, and I didn't know how to ask them. Uh, uh, some of them. Uh, and Nicholas Espinosa, I don't even know who that is. It's Joy. This is very random. My girlfriend just logging in. Oh, oh yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, greetings from Russia. I can't if the name is in Russia. I don't speak Russian. Uh, and uh, Joseph Mato Hugo, Cliff Roth, Ahmed Sadin, a lot of people. Hey, how are you? <laughs> uh, is that your girlfriend? Yeah, that's my girlfriend. Okay. My dog, my dog. Well, her dog. Uh, our dog. Oh, our cool. Dog. Cool. Your girlfriend kind of looks a little like. A Spanish Sarah Silverman, or is that a is that <laughs> that a, that a, a Oh, does I she? Hear that uh, a lot. You're like I, I, yeah. You don't need to tell me that. All right. <laughs> is your girl? Is your girlfriend gonna sing too, or what's what's the deal? Does she? No, sing? no, no, not no, yet, not yet. Right. We're, we're working on that. Yeah, yeah. She's actually uh, funnier than Nico is. She she writes a lot. Oh. Of, she's actually a lot funnier than Nico. That's where he gets all his jokes from his girlfriend. Does he? Does he? What what what's one of the jokes you wrote for him? Go for it. Uh, no, start? no, it's just, it's just moments, really, not jokes. She's a she's a writer. I'm not. She's she writes comedy. I don't. It's emotionally like innuendo, sexual type humor, or <laughs> no, just immature five year old kid, <laughs> like farting and stuff. Okay, that's yeah. good. <laughs> that's all. I mean. <laughs> You're like, what? You need to write. So I always, I was like, bands that write comedy songs. Like Tenacious D is like one of my favorites. So we we have we were actually thinking about that. We've never taken that direction where we've. We like most of our songs are always really rock based or folk, and they're either really tragic or really messed up actually. And um, I don't know, that's something we well, could do. Yeah, Tenacious D, Lonely Island, and uh, <laughs> you saw Tenacious Flat, D. Flat of the Conquest are my, like one of my favorite like bands when it comes to comedy. And, well, and the, some of their God, songs these, are man. really catchy too. Yeah, they're really good. So now I listen to them just for the for the hooks. Really. No, they're they're really. It's funny when you see them. When I was listening to all of the uh, like, for instance, Tenacious D, it's like when they actually write the music, it's actually good music. It's catchy. Like it's they're not just random guys just putting stuff. They really are musicians. And, and Jack Live, you know, it's amazing. It's pretty cool. Well, yeah. thanks for thanks for bringing your girlfriend. I didn't know we were gonna get the girl. We got you. We had Natalie well, here. Join, join in. I don't know. Like yeah, it just happened. <laughs> It's like if we had all if we had this thing full of girls, we would have had like you know 
thousands of viewers to start. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what, it's the internet. The internet likes to see the ratio balanced more, for sure. Too many dudes in one video. Too many dudes. Too many dudes. Too sausage festy for uh, for the for the men that are out there. And the women. What and is this? It's, no, it's uh, yeah. We're on chat roulette right now. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, right. What? And that's your dog. What's the? What's your dog's name? Is Kubrick. It, Stanley it, Kubrick. Was, is it really Kubrick, like the director? Yeah, like Stanley Kubrick. Oh my god. You know, an old guy. Hey, hey Kubrick, what's up? I like your movies. Take a picture. I got a picture. There we go. Snap. Technology comes far. Well, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure and. Uh, Tell people where they can see you next and where they can find your music and more about you. Sure, for oh. sure. Uh, well, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, we again November twenty second in Miami. We're doing a tour kickoff. We, 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 have have talk, wait, we should talk about November twenty second at church. <laughs> is it November twenty second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew you said that. It's right, free. Okay. It's free, but he, he wasn't gonna say it. it's free. So there's no reason not to come. And then we um we put the show together. Like we, it's kind of our last. Show for a little bit, like I would say that we're putting together, and um, I tried really getting every band like locally that I, I really respect and love, and it's nine other rock bands basically. And like all a festival. Of them are, all of them are really really good, so it's just a complete like almost a local music showcase. And ends up. You should like, totally, if you can. I'm not saying you can, but if there's inter if there's hardwired internet and a laptop, I don't know if your girlfriend will do it or someone will sit there and open it up. In like broadcast all, as long as nobody's doing covers. I mean, you could do covers, but then sometimes they flag it. But I would just, it's worth it. We also have, we also have uh, internet radio, Joe Radio. It's an internet radio, and they always live stream our shows. So we're oh, cool. we'll probably, probably have that too. But yeah, we're going to bring it up. Yeah, to so, do it. That'd be great. Yeah, also, because cause if you guys that. do it, it'll be on your page, and people will be like, oh, let's, they'll find you attached yeah, to that video. Cool. Yeah, if we get someone to actually do it, we'll figure it out. I, I know that, um, well, yeah, definitely I know that Jolt Radio will for sure be streaming the entire show live. I mean, I'll, I guess I'll clarify that soon. But <laughs> Joe Radio, hashtag, what is that, JoeRadio.com or something? Yeah, yeah. JoeRadio.com. Or just Google Joe Radio. I don't know if it's .com or .org. Oh, or and you know, we didn't say, that's also something we forgot to, to say. We're um, going to be releasing on uh, tape. With an, uh, an underground label that's in Boston, Boston-based label. It's, it's called Bufu Records, and we're releasing like a preview to the CD, like four tracks yeah, on the tape. Very cool. Uh, that's the next. It's a, yeah, out. limited edition, a hundred tapes that we're doing with them. And Bufu is, is an example of like something that really is a supporter of local music. They've been like they're old friends of ours that came to Boston, and now they basically opened a label, just like a house label that they made, and it's doing really well, really, really well. What's the and what's the name of your album? That you're, that's coming out. Uh, the is one that's coming out is gonna be called 4150. That's where our studio is, and uh, we decided to give it uh, respect to our studio. Do you have like an Abbey Road picture? Hey, what's up? There's someone behind you. Oh, oh yeah, my dad. <laughs> hey, dad. Cool. No, uh, no, we actually like graffiti. Like I did it like in two seconds, and I just put that post 4150. Oh, and nice, it, nice. It actually looks pretty good. Yeah, so it's, it ended up. There's no Abbey Road thing to it. Yeah. And so what? And you have an album. You said you have another album too before you already released, or something else. Well, no, but, uh, the tape will be like a preview of the album. Okay. We have the songs from the album be on the tape that we're releasing. And we, we, by the time we probably get back from tour, we'll probably do a CD release as well. We're gonna take the CDs with us on the road, but we'll have like an official release when we come back. Yeah. And um, that's the only I think. And then you can go to I mean Bandcamp and all those websites. SoundCloud. Our Facebook has the links to everything, so then you can yeah. go. You can also go to uh, the devpoetsband.com and then links to everything as well. Yeah. And so music should officially, which we have the songs in the, I think we've actually put them out recently because we're doing the tape release, but it should be out there soon. And then if anything, the city will be out in probably a month, hopefully. Yeah. We'll have it on the road. So if you, someone, wherever we land on the road, if you're there, if you want to get it, we have a copy for you. Yeah. Cool. And like devpoets.com, is that the, is the it your website? Band .com. Yeah. Oh, devpoetsband.com. Yeah. Okay. De well, the de Death Poets dot com also works. No, it doesn't work anymore. Oh, it does okay. It does not redirect. It takes me to some like <laughs> random like mute like sign language. I don't know some other thing <laughs> with poets. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Hangout Conversations. It's been fun. A lot of great songs for people to listen to. People, if you if you're just tuning in, or you could rewind it. You could watch the entire video. Watch all the songs. You guys played like I think like six songs, right? No, five. Yeah, five five songs. Nine covers. Very, very, yeah, I mean, yeah. You kind of you sung a little bit about covers and the girlfriend here and yeah, Natalie and got the dog. Yeah. Got my yeah. dog. 
You got dad. Yeah, you got Natalie everything. for the first half of the video. And Natalie, Natalie, yeah, and so and then I don't. I mean, so Natalie was in this band called The New with Lori Garotti, and like I did a show with them two years ago, and Natalie's hair was a lot shorter back then, <laughs> uh, believe it or not. And they, it's funny because they were they were singing like uh, they covered like Friday and Earth Angel for like the promo. So we did a lot of those cool things, and and uh, it was like there's someone's like I wanna take you home. The, the, I don't know. I can't do it. But it was like, I've never you guys, seen her play bass, so I've never seen her. Oh, you've sing. never seen it? Yeah, yeah, oh. totally. It, it was just hanging out. If you guys want to fast forward through it or check it out, that's on uh, YouTube.com. I'll actually just give you the link after I go off air. You guys can like th look through them and make fun of them or, or enjoy it or whatever. It's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, but that actually, that would be pretty cool. If Natalie, like, you pulled her up to play bass on a song or something. Okay. So. I mean, well, definitely. Natalie... Uh, I mean, there might actually she's going on tour of us, so maybe there'll be a, a few shows and things that we're gonna actually have her back line and play some bass with us. That'd be cool. Yeah, she's actually everyone, a really good bass player. Everyone so. likes a chick bass player. I mean, yeah, you know, it works <laughs> for sure. All right, cool. So, uh, Sean, Nico, girlfriend, uh, Matt Rappaport, have a wonderful day. Check out DeathPoetsBand.com, and we'll see you next time in Hangout Conversations. That yeah, is thank you so much. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you. That's a wrap. Let's take a picture. Boom. Snap. Crack, pop, stop broadcast.